Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to take a look at how we can do Sachi inference with Ultralytics Yolo V8. So the whole idea behind Sachi is that we take our image, we divide it into tiles, and then we have those tiles and slide it over the whole image, do inference on each individual tile. This comes with a trade-off, but then we are able to detect very small objects in the images. But again, we have to do inference on each individual tile. We take the bounding boxes from each individual tile and scale it back into the original frame so we get all the predictions on our original frame. So this is pretty cool. Now we can detect very small objects. I'm going to show you every single step, both the code and also how we can do it and some examples at the end. So let's just jump straight into the Autolytics documentation. If we go inside the guides tab and also over here to the left, we have Sachi tiled inference. You can read about it. We can also see this GIF here, basically just explaining what I went over in the start. So we have these tiles. It is sliding over the whole image, doing inference on each individual one. And then we combine the results and we're then able to do detections on very small objects, as you can see here. If we just did inference with Yolo V8 for a single pass, then we take the whole image, we rescale it probably down to 640 by 640. So we lose a lot of pixels that we can really detect objects on. And when we do that, there's just not enough pixels to be able to do our prediction. So the cars here in the background would never be able to be detected with just a single run. And therefore we have to use Sachi. You get an introduction about it here, the key features, what is a sliced inference, how you can do it and also the benefits, but we already covered all of that. So here we see without Sachi, we don't get the detections of the cars in the background, but if we're using Sachi, we get all the detections of the cars in our image. This is how we can install it and prepare it and so on, but let's now just jump into the GitHub repository, take a look at the code, and then I'm going to show you every single step, how you can get this up and running. So let's just jump straight into the Autolytics GitHub repository. We go inside Autolytics, examples, and then we have all the different examples in here that you can use directly in your own applications and projects. So we have Yolo V8 Sachi inference on video. We have a readme file and also the Python script that takes care of all of it. So the only thing that we need to do is install the required libraries. We have Autolytics here. I've already cloned it to my computer so we can find it in my terminal in just a second once we're going to set that up. Then we're going to pip install the Sachi and Ultralytics, and we're pretty much good to go and can run this Python script just as we would if we're using Yolo V8 from Ultralytics in the terminal directly, or you can just take the Python code and use that. So let's now jump into the code and see how it does this tiling windows. Import different dependencies, not really too important. We have Sachi, auto detection models. So this is the class that is going to set up the model. We get our slice prediction. So this is the function that we're going to call on our auto detect model we have a run where we specify weights source if you want to view the image save the image and so on then we create an instance of our model so first of all we download our yolo v8 model then we create our auto detection model from a pre-trained model we just specify the model type and also the model path we get our detection model then we can then directly call sachi tiled inference on top of we set up a video capture here, like you can specify if you're using this in your own application or project, you can specify a video file, you can just throw in an image directly to it, and you can do such inference on just single images, but it could also be your webcam. So right now, we just have our video capture as long as it's open, we read in frames from that, we get our slice prediction. So here we just pass in the frame, the detection model, and now we also need to specify the slice height and the slice width. So this is basically the size of our tiles that we want to slide over our whole image. So this will depend on the image resolution. So sometimes you will act like just divide it into four chunks. So you can just take your image resolution and divide it by four. And then we also need to specify the overlap because again, if we just have these chunks, we don't have any overlap and we might end up just cutting our objects over in half. So we might need to go in and specify that we want to use, for example, 0.2, which is 20% overlap. Then instead of just having these slices, we will actually like have overlapping slices and we don't cut out our objects. So we need to have this one here, just need to specify the slice width and this overlap that we want to have and we're pretty much good to go. So it's basically just taking a for loop, running through all the slices, running predictions on it, rescaling it back to the original frame again. Then we get our results. We can just extract all the individual results from this result variable that is returned. Have a for loop, just enumerating or iterating through all the predictions, extracting the results, and then you can use the bounding boxes, classes, and so on in your own applications and projects. And that's pretty much it. We don't need to do 
anything more. This is how easy it is to use when we combine Sanji with Ultralytics. So if you just go back again, let's take a look at how we can do an example. So first of all, we need to pip install it and also git clone it, but I've already done it. Let's open up a new terminal. I'm just going to activate my Ultralytics environment. I'm using Anaconda. Here we clone it, it is already in my path, and then we can also pip install Ultralytics and Sanji, but it should already be in here. So there we go, once you have done that, we can cd into this directory that we have just cloned from GitHub. Now we have that, we can just call ls to see that we have our models, readme, I also have a video file here that we're going to process, and we have our Python script. So here we're good to go now, we have all the installations, we have the code, this is how easy it is to get up and running. Now I'm just going to grab this code where we specify our own model. You can get away with using the nano model because now we have our sliced images where we're doing predictions on each individual one of them so we can get away with smaller models. Of course, there's already a trade-off. Like again, if we're using 10 or 15 tiles, it will basically just be 10 times the inference speed compared to just having a single image that would do processing on. So this is not really suitable for real-time projects and applications, but it might be very useful for a lot of computer vision applications where you actually need to detect every single object in the frame and there's no room for missing detections. So right now I've just copy pasted this. We can paste directly into our terminal. We just go with the nano model. Let's also specify that we want to view the image. So view im and we can go back and just specify the video file that we want to use. Again, you can use this on any source that you want, but right now we just run it on the video. You can extract the Python code, use it on your own. So right now we're basically just running it. It divides it into 15 tiles. So every single frame here, we have 15 tiles. It's basically just tiling over it. We can see we have like probably one frame per second or something like that. I'm running it on my CPU. We detect all the cars in the frames, we probably missed some up here, could be some confidence score, but we still get all the other cars in here. And if you've seen the other videos on the Ultralytics channel, where we use this video, it is not able to detect any of the cars above, pretty much like above this line here. So this is very good. We lose a lot of processing speed, but again, there's always a trade-off between accuracy and speed. But this might be suitable for a lot of applications, which is not necessary to run in real time. So this is how easy it is. I hope you learned a ton. Definitely go in and check this out and also use it in your own applications and projects. I know that a lot of people out there, they want to detect very, very small and tiny objects in the frames. And they don't know that we have this Sachi framework that works together with Ultralytics in just a few lines of code. So I hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.